And you know, this is just the show enough, as they say, the honest truth about DTF printing. So in this video, I'm sitting here with Brother Ernest. And How's it going? <laughs> we're gonna ask him all about the process of DTF based on his six month review video. And then we're gonna let that video play right after the intro. <laughs> Before we jump into it, let them know who you are and what you're all about. Hi, so I'm Brother Ernest. You can go to my YouTube channel. Just look up Brother Ernest. I've been DTF printing since June of last year. That's June of 2020. Um, and I've been screen printing the DTF method for a very long time and supplying and selling the ink, uh, the hybrid film, hybrid powder, and the hybrid transfers, which is a... Uh, very laborious method of printing. Um, you can get beautiful prints just like you can with DTF. Um, it's just the manpower that it takes to do those prints is unlike anything I think we've seen in the print industry yet. Reminds me of the direct-to-garment industry. Mm -hmm. Like the first year it came out. Yeah, uh, I feel like every few years is like a new phenomenon, right? And something takes over the industry and then once that happens, you know, every it's like a, a craze with the internet and the print industry. So you sell DTF printers uh, and all the supplies and different things like that on your website, liveeventprinting.com. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, liveeventprinting.com um, is my wife's website founded by a master printer who passed on, um, who just got us addicted to buying printers long before um, DTF ever came about. See, I've been a photographic printer for, you know, a very long time. And so I own one, two, three, four, five. So I own five 24 inch printers and about six 44 inch printers, one EcoSolvent, 64 inch printer, Roland. And uh, I am highly addicted to printing photos. Um, this is where it all began, you know. I'm highly addicted to taking photos with my own camera and then printing them, you know, right behind me or taking photos with my own um, camera and then putting them into sublimation. Um, so I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of a sublimation printer um, above anything else. I love to sublimate because of the number of things that you can do with a photo. You can literally turn those sublimation prints into a lot of different things. Shirts. Yeah, shirts mugs, gloves, Shirts to me is like the... Tags. Yeah, right. It's the least of sublimation. Right. Right? So if, you're, if your business is built around just printing sublimation t-shirts... Printing a lot of stuff. Yeah, you're, you're, you're at the most common form of sublimation. It's when you can print the nice, beautiful metallic racks or, you know, you can print the... You know, the beautiful canvas gallery wraps that you can sublimate and, you know, they, they, they last for years. And so sublimation is my favorite form of printing, hands down. Right, right. So you made a video, it's quite controversial in the DTF world, but you were giving out the show enough, as you say, right? You're giving yes. out the show enough about six months after running your DTG, uh, DTF rather, uh, printers, you gave a review and what are people about to watch in this video viewers? So the, the desktop models of DTF printers come with a lot of heartache, a lot of responsibility and the knowledge in advance that you're going to blow a print head. Your print head's not going to last forever. Your capping station's not going to last forever. You're, you could possibly blow a motherboard. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do and the risk associated with owning a desktop printer, no matter who sells you the desktop printer, is that you can clog the head and you most likely will. You have to be prepared for this, right? It's not like sublimation to where you may not clog the head, but even sublimators clog the head. Even people with normal inkjet printers, 
um, the aqueous inks clog the head. So you know that if DTG is gonna clog the head, not as bad as DTF, in my opinion, um, DTF is a, a whole animal in its own invention because one, the majority of people don't know where, where they're getting the ink. The majority of people um, are buying ink um, and they know nothing about the ink. Oh, it's just hot or cold peel. And I don't think they're buying hot peel, but right. um, it's just cold peel ink, you know, cold peel ink, put it in your printer. And very few people understand the complexity of the ink, the separation of, you know, the chemical from the water in the ink, um, the titanium that's in the ink or, you know, whatever chemicals may be in your ink. I don't know where you're getting your ink from. True, true. Um, but whatever the item is that's in your ink has a very, very, very high potential of clogging your print head. Um, you, you don't run it clean for a day or two. You don't get on that work and move that printer every two to three days, move ink through it, you're gonna end up in a clogged print head. So buy a second print head when you buy your printer. All right, right. So in this video, the remainder 15 minutes, this is a short version of him going through, taking the printer apart, cleaning the print head, throwing it back together like it's nobody's business. But you guys are going to get to watch uh, what his feelings are after running uh, a DTF printer after six months or a few of them after six months. Right. The difference is between, say, somebody like myself and a right. guy that, that's doing 10 or 15 transfers you a week on is that we're running three to 400 transfers you know, a day through these printers and they're really not built for that kind of abuse. Right, right. Um, so I'm gonna let this video play and if you guys wanna check out more from Brother Ernest and also the link to that video and his channel will be down in the description, go ahead and check it out and we are gonna let this thing ride. And the last thing that I wanna tell you is look at your DTF printer like your wife or your husband, you better have a prenup because that <laughs> DTF printer is gonna, it's gonna be a problem. And I, I just want to be honest, right? Know that when you buy a DTF printer from somebody, the print head's not warranted. You know, that those things aren't warranted. What's warranted is that you were sold a printer <laughs> from somebody, it. you know, and maybe somebody on the phone will say, hey, I'll help you through that. Or if they're like me, I'll video through and I'll walk you through and hopefully solve your problem. All right, guys, check it out. Put comments down below, and we'll catch you in the next video. And I want to talk to you about, um, you know, my thoughts on DTF and all that jazz six months later. Um, DTF is a lot of work. It's more work than printing DTG. And for those of you that are rushing out to buy you know, DTF printers, I just want you to think about the possibility of buying transfers first before you go buy printers. And I'm going to show you the complications of DTF. Um, you know, the ink buildup that you're going to have and before you actually make the decision to buy a DTF printer, well, you need to be in the business of, you know, understanding the printer, repairing the printer and keeping that printer working because it's a lot of work. Just yesterday, I, you know, probably a day before that, we went through about 70 transfers, um, got them all out on time, and then all of a sudden I lose all my channels. And so what I'm gonna do is take out the print head here. A lot of you have bought your DTF printers from us and the nightmare is just beginning. I really think knowing what I know now that the average person is not going to put forth the effort to keep a DTG or DTF running. Um, it is a lot of work to keep these machines tuned and running. It's literally a full-time job just to keep one or two DTF printers working and we have several here at our shop. Um, just the ink buildup is, you know, aggressive. And as I said, more so than printing with uh, DTG. Now we'll take this screw out. A lot of people are starting to talk about, you know, the process of DTF printing. You see stand banks and many others, but you know, DTF should not replace, um, unless you're the one doing it, it should not replace the majority of your transfers. It can, and if you're ordering transfers from somebody and you're letting them do all the work, it's a great trade-off. Um, you know, something that I think about consistently, 
but you know when you get your prints your prints look great they look fabulous all of this right here I'm gonna clean off and uh, that way so we can take a look at this and you all can make the most educated decision that you can make because um, I think we sell very good inks and I think we sell very good uh, film and very good powder without a doubt um, Juan, slow down. I would highly advise you, buy your transfers, okay? Because, dude, it's not like sublimation. It is not self-sufficient machine. This DTF requires a full-time staff, a full-time printer, cleaning the printhead, running the printer. It's not like a DTG like we have sitting right over here, you know, in that area over there that... You can just leave off for a few days, come back and run a cleaning. Listen, these inks will start to separate fast. If they're not used in one to two days, you're going to have some uh, separation issues. And then, of course, um, once the ink starts separating, you know, you got to shake your carts and then you got to flush all that ink out because, you know, the titanium and the water is now two different um, sediments they've mixed. So... But let's take a look at this because now you can really see that white ink build up. That's from one day and I clean, I take my print head out every single day, okay? It is part of the maintenance of this printer. However, I'm not running, you know, 10 transfers a day, you know, printing for my own business. We are running transfers for a lot of people around the world. Um, or a lot of people around and inside the world, as I should say. And the buildup of this ink, you know, if you have ink buildup, as the print head is moving across the film, that buildup down there is going to grab your film and it's going to drag it just like this. And you won't know it. You can have a clean uh, nozzle check. As I did, you can have a clean nozzle check and holy shit, all of a sudden my print's dragging. Is it my board? You know, is there ink on the bottom of the print head? And in this case, we had a lot of ink on the bottom of the print head. One day. One day is all that it takes. You know, one print to knock you offline. And if you're knocked offline, you could be knocked offline for a day. And then you're behind 250 transfers or so. So, you know, I mean, I really would love to sell everybody a DTF printer, right? Because we have a very large stock of DTF printers. Um, but I want to tell everybody the honest to God truth, the honest truth that, you know, this is a very, very complicated process. And I think that the most people will agree with me if they're really honest, you know, there'll be some, everybody I know, right, that are professionals, they have problems like I'm dealing with now. If it's not this, you know, they're having problems with um, their resetter, they're having problems with they lose lines. And um, everybody's so excited to go get a DTF printer. Anybody can get a DTF printing, right? But can you keep it printing? I, that's where the deciding factor is. Anybody can throw off a print. Anybody can go convert a DTF printer. They can put their own inks in it. But the moment you put the ink in, I call this like a terrible ex-wife, right? Who's out to torment you. That's what I look at DTF as. But the prints are just beautiful, gorgeous prints. You know, they, um, they, they last, they endure. But if you're running a printer, a, a business, if you're screen printing, if you're doing vinyl work and you have a customer that comes in and they're like, hey, Ernie, I need 30 or 40 shirts. Can you get them done? You're like, yeah, I can get them done in one of the methods. Hopefully my DTF will be that method. Um, so, you know, the window for DTF printing right now is there. It's a great opportunity. You know, if you're doing a few transfers for your own business each month, it's great to do. How do you find a good DTF printer? You're going to pay a lot of money for it unless you can find a used one online or Craigslist or something like that. And then you've got to worry about whether or not it's warranted or issued. Um, if there's any issues with it. So that's a lot of maintenance and that's the favor that people have over white toner printing is that there is no maintenance the drawback to white toner printing is that it just doesn't last 
you know, it, it's not a good product to uh, to give your customer unless you're doing rasterization, putting lines in their print. And I've had customers look at the print after I've rasterized it and go, man, I don't like it. You know, I don't like that print at all. So then came the world of DTF back in June and, you know, started screwing around with it because at that time I had, you know, 10 or 15 P600s um, that I was using for converting to DTG printers. Um, so you get a DTF printer. You know, if you want free time and you want to um, have that free time and enjoy that free time, then the answer to that is probably you should not get a DTF printer. Buy your transfers. I'd love to say that, um, you know, everybody should get their transfers from me, but there's a lot of companies out there that are offering transfers. You, now you, we got to put in our print head correctly, and that can become really problematic as well. The options are um, order your transfers, buy your own DTF printer, enter the world of nightmares. Everybody that I know has DTF sorrows. I mean, in essence, it's just part of it. It's part of the game. We got it. We're understanding that this is going to occur. You know, we just want to print. Everybody just wants to get to printing. And DTF is a hard skill to master or learn for the average person. So you can already see the amount of work that you have to do, sometimes on a daily basis. And... You know, that's not always what people want to deal with, right? They just want to be able to go into their office, turn their printer on, fire it up, and go. And, um, well, so that is not the case with DTF, right? It is a very, very complicated printing method. Um, if DTG had as good of results in printing, nobody would be using DTF at all, right? all the DTG stores would not be selling DTFs. You're going to find yourself spending more time trying to clean your printer than what the, you know, what the time is worth. So the best advice that I can give you is let somebody who's committed to DTF printing, let them worry about the DTF printing, right? And you just worry about buying the transfers and um, taking care of business that way because there's so many variables to this that, um, you know, you're going to experience. Ernest, you know, my print, my printer has lost all of its channels. And then you're going to have to go figure out why it's lost all of its channels, do a thorough cleaning on the print head, sucking through the lines. You know, it's just, it's really an overload of work. And then your ink dries up, especially that white ink, it dries up pretty dang quick. So you just have to keep doing this until you can basically um, get familiar with the process. And it's not going to be an easy task. DTF is a tough business. Um, it's, it's definitely not maintenance free. You know, the majority of you are going to run out and be super excited when you get your DTF printer and you convert it or, you know, you buy one that's converted only to find out that um, there's a hell of a lot of work in it. And so that's why companies that print transfers, you know, are still going to be in the market. Screen printing transfers are in the market. So DTF, if for the average printer, if you have a printer like this here, um, a P800, P600, how long can you le typically leave an L1800 or P600 between prints without having nozzle issues? Not long. Right when you're talking, uh, you know, an hour or so, you got to run a cleaning. So the, these printers don't like to be left alone. The DTF inks will, you know, start giving you problems if they're not used consistently. And um, you know, this is just the show enough, as they say, the honest truth about DTF printing. Because you know, there are people out there that want to sell you printers, and I sell printers that make it look easy. And that's the one thing that I don't do. I tell people. I actually try to talk people out of buying a DTF printer because of the amount of work. And they're like, well, that's pretty stupid, man. Well, it goes two ways, right? If you buy a DTF printer and you realize how much work is involved and then, you know, you're not 
fluent it just again you can take apart a DTF printer you can take apart an inkjet printer but it's more than just taking it apart right you have to know how, how to how to maintenance the printer and how to keep everything running and working at an operable state and most people just seem to struggle with that and they are not going to do it so um, man the sorrows with DTF are there they're real but the payoff is that the customer will love the prints is it honestly worth buying a print a, a DTF printer to do 20 transfers man I don't know I, I don't I don't think it is um, even though the prints are superior to white toner white toner so the market went like this 2012 2013 you know everybody was gung-ho about DTG when it came out and you had to buy these twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar printers. Um, twenty fifteen rolls around, the market introduces, you know, DIY do-it-yourself DTF or DTG printers. Everybody's loving it. There's problems, you know. There's a few builders that creep up out there, and um, you know they sold a lot of printers. But selling the printers is the easy part. You know, we can sell printers all day long, right? Keeping the people using their printers, man, that's the tough part. The average person, when they get a DTF printer, they quit. They literally quit because of the amount of work involved. And, you know, you guys know that I'm going to shoot straight with you. Do I think that the average print? if you're already used to building your business on transfers, don't change it, Right. Don't change it because what you're going to do is find that you're going to be repairing your printer, keeping it maintenance, working on it all the time more than you're actually printing transfers. Um, but, you know, again, some people just love that challenge. I'm one of those crazy people that love that challenge. Um, and, you know, I, although I could buy DTF transfers, and there's some times where we all have to because all printers are down, but in my case, I would just tear apart another printer and um, go after it that way and get myself printing again. But the real truth is, people, is that this is a lot of work. It's